This U.S. president was called the congressman's congressman. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're taking a look at the life and accomplishments of Gerald Ford. I have not campaigned either for the presidency or the vice presidency. I have not subscribed to any partisan platform. I am indebted to no man and only to one woman. Leslie Lynch King Jr. was born July 14, 1913 in Omaha, Nebraska. Shortly after his birth, his parents divorced and eventually he took his stepfather's name to become Gerald Rudolph Ford Jr. The young Ford excelled in sports and Boy Scouts. His skills allowed him to play varsity football at the University of Michigan while studying economics and political science. With aspirations to attend Yale Law School, the all-star athlete and undergraduate student paid his college costs by washing dishes and waiting tables. This humble and determined approach to achieving his goals characterized Ford throughout his career. After graduating in 1935, Ford entered law school. There, he took interest in politics and signed a petition to prevent U.S. involvement in the Second World War. He was a proud nationalist and supported isolationist policies he felt would ensure the security and safety of Americans. Things changed after the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor in 1941. Ford left his law practice in Grand Rapids to enlist in the Navy, where he participated in airstrikes throughout the Asian Pacific. After almost dying in a vicious typhoon in 1944, he resigned with honors two years later. But this involvement in the war later led him to favor internationalist policies. The late 40s saw the former pilot enter politics. Right before his successful election to Congress in 1948, he married former dancer and model Elizabeth Bloomer Warren, with whom he eventually had four children. As a Republican politician, Ford's uprightness, hard work, and reputation for dealing well with both parties got him re-elected 12 times and earned him the admiration of his fellow congressmen. While in Congress, he helped secure funds to renovate the White House in addition to serving on the Warren Commission to explore the circumstances of President John F. Kennedy's assassination. And the commission found no evidence of a conspiracy, foreign or domestic. Ford finally had the opportunity to enter federal politics in 1964 when Democrat Lyndon Johnson won the presidency and left the Republicans in need of a House minority leader. Ford was the first choice for the job, and once sworn in, he limited the reach of Johnson's Great Society programs and laid out a clear plan for American success in the Vietnam War. Opportunity knocked again in 1973 when Vice President Spiro Agnew stepped down amid the Watergate scandal, and Ford became his replacement. One year later, incriminating evidence against President Richard Nixon surfaced, and he too resigned. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Vice President Ford will be sworn in as president at that hour in this office. Without being voted in, Ford became the 38th president of the United States on August 9, 1974. As we bind up the internal wounds of Watergate, more painful and more poisonous than those of foreign wars, let us restore the golden rule to our political process and let brotherly love purge our hearts of suspicion and of hate. The Nixon administration left him with numerous problems, a depressed economy, the fallout from Watergate, an energy crisis, and a war abroad that was spiraling out of control. My fellow Americans, we have a lot of work to do. One of his first moves as president was to issue a controversial pardon to Nixon, despite heavy condemnation from politicians and the public. With Nelson Rockefeller as his VP, Ford attacked domestic policy. He managed inflation and unemployment by cutting taxes and spending, and by deregulating certain industries. He and his wife Betty were also vocal about subjects like women's equality, addiction, and even cancer, and this also colored his presidency. Abroad, Ford helped end the Vietnam War, though he was criticized for falling short in terms of aid in South Vietnam. He was also condemned for backing the Helsinki Accords between Western nations and the Communists, and for his policy regarding the Panama Canal and, later, the Indonesian occupation of East Timor. This disapproval may have led to two assassination attempts within a three-week period in September 1975. Even with his life threatened, Ford ran for president the next year. 
Though he was ultimately defeated by Democrat Jimmy Carter, Ford was thanked for restoring honor to the White House. I want to thank my predecessor for all he has done to heal our land. Ford stayed active in business and politics, even expressing support for the equal rights of gays and lesbians in the new millennium. Unfortunately, his health deteriorated and the 93-year-old died on December 26, 2006. Though many of his decisions were challenged, Gerald Ford proved he was the right man for the job when he took office. Thanks to his personal integrity and honesty, he has ensured a place in history.